My audience is 97% guys, okay? And most of them, like something like 80%, are between the ages of 18 and uh, 44, I believe. Yeah. But this video is really for the younger uh, guys in my crowd, okay? The guys who are in their very early 20s, maybe their late teens, maybe their mid and early teens. Th this is a video for somebody who's like, 13, 15, 17, 19. And it's about predatory gay men. Like everybody else on YouTube, I've been following the whole uh, James Charles fiasco, right? Where, whereby this, uh, this beauty guy who had like something like 16 million subscribers, all of a sudden, well, it was found out that he had been just uh, being like a dickhead, right? And he had been acting in sexually predatory ways towards straight young men. And because of it, he's like losing, you know, millions of subscribers and it's just a complete fiasco insofar as his career is concerned. A lot of people are saying at this time that it's likely that his career will not survive this scandal. And I wouldn't be surprised. Um, you know, it's, it's riveting this, this implosion that's happening in real time. But at the same time, it's worth talking about something. And, and that's the issue of predatory gay men. And, uh, and how young straight guys should be aware of them. Yeah, because when they talk about predatory gay men, there's always like the stereotype or this vision that it's like, you know, some, some big 250 pound muscular butch guy in some, you know, prison, you know, uh, 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 prison yard, you know, going up to the, the, the fresh fish of the prison and raping them or some shit like that, right? And that's not the case. I mean, like all stereotypes, oh no, not like all stereotypes, like, like many stereotypes. That's not how actual predatory gay men are. Oh no, it, it, it's very, very different. See, because I have some experience with predatory gay guys. Oh yeah, yeah, because when I was like 12, I think, I was hit on by an older guy, uh, an older kid, who I think at the time must have been maybe 18, and uh, he hit on me, but at, at the time, I didn't really realize that he was hitting on me, right? He just wanted to hang out with me and be my friend, and I thought it was kind of weird. At first, it was very flattering, but then there was something about him that I just felt was off. And I sort of, like, distanced myself from the guy. And then much later, I realized what was going on. I, I realized that this guy had been, you know, trying to butter me up. And, and see if he could quote unquote break me in. Oh yeah. See, you talk to older straight guys, you know, guys in their you know late 30s, 40s, 50s. Yeah, and, and we've all been there. And we laugh about it. Yeah, because you know when we're in our 30s, 40s, 50s, we're completely confident in our sexuality. We know exactly who the fuck we are, right? And so yeah, it's it's fucking funny to talk about how back in the day, back when you were a teenager, there was some uh, gay guy who was hitting on you because it happens all the time. It happens all the time, not just that the gay guy is hitting on you, but the gay guy is trying to groom you. He's trying to groom you in order to get you into bed. Oh yeah. That's what's going on. Now, a lot of these sexual predators, they come at you, right? They come at you and you are presumably a young straight kid, right? How do they come at you? Well, they come at you with warmth, with a smile, mm, with a welcoming embrace. They come at you and say that you can tell them your problems. You can talk to them about whatever is going on in your life. They tell you the words that you want to hear, especially when you're at a weak point in your life. See? See, these, these guys, these sexual predators, they come at you not when things are going aces in your life. No, they come at you when, you know, you're in trouble with your parents, when you're in trouble with your peer group, when things have not been going well for you. That, that's when they come at you, okay? And, and they offer a shoulder to cry on and they give you a, a warm, firm pat on the back, and you feel good, and you feel flattered. And a lot of times, these uh, gay sexual predators, well, they're older than you. And so, of course, you, you feel flattered that an older guy is paying attention to you. I mean, you're a 13-year-old kid, a 15, 17-year-old kid, and some guy who's, you know, 
five, 10 years older than you, 15 years older than you, right? He, he, he's listening to you and talking to you and, and he wants to be your friend. And so of course you're gonna feel flattered. It's natural, of course, you know? Especially if he seems together, if he seems like cool, if he's driving a cool car or something like that, of course you're gonna feel flattered. And you're, want, you're, you're going to want to be friends with him. And here comes the, the dangerous part. You're going to want to try to make him happy. And that's when you get into trouble. See, because it's quite natural for you to want to make somebody that you like happy. And we all do it all the time, okay? I mean, uh, you know, often as not, I'll stop by the supermarket on my way home to pick up a couple of uh, Kinder Surprises, these little chocolates with a little toy inside. Uh, I'll pick up a couple to give to my kids because I know they love them, right? And I want to make my kids happy, which is perfectly normal, okay? And so when somebody, an older guy, an older guy who seems to be giving you so much, you know, starts to make demands, and demands that you might feel a little uncomfortable with, demands that you might not really want to comply with, right? It's going to be quite natural for you to sort of like silence those inner doubts and comply with what he wants. And there's something else going on, see? Something else that people don't really want to talk about, but it's the truth. And that is that a lot of these gay predators, right? They come at you and they act in ways that are very feminine. Their, their demeanor is, is very feminine. And, and the way they use words and the way they present themselves is very feminine. And what happens is that, see, this is sort of like they are mimicking female behavior. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's conscious or not. I mean, you'd have to ask somebody more knowledgeable than I am in this regard. But see, they are mimicking female behavior and mimicking those female behaviors that straight guys find sexually arousing. I'm, I'm not talking about the, the obvious ones of like having nice tits and a nice ass. No, I'm, I'm talking about the subtle ones, that, that, that feeling of comfort and welcoming and paying attention to us, right? They are mimicking that behavior and sometimes, you know, like in the case of this uh, James Charles, I mean, he's wearing all this makeup and stuff. And what does he look like? He looks like a woman, right? Like he's mimicking the way a woman works, uh, the way a woman looks rather. Mimicking how she looks and, and what happens. You as a straight guy, you will feel sexually aroused or at least sexually interested in this person. And that will freak you out, of course. Of course it'll freak you out, okay? It'll freak you out because you'll be asking yourself as a young kid, am I gay? You see? see? See, this sexual predator, he's mimicking the behavior of women to whom you are naturally interested in. And so that mimicry confuses you. And you'll start to wonder to yourself, well, maybe I am gay. Maybe I am gay because I find this guy really attractive, I want to be around him all the time, and I'm kind of like finding him sexy even. But I, I don't think I'm gay, but you know, he, he looks and, and everything, and, and uh, what do I do? And you're gonna be very, very confused. But you have to keep in mind that, you know, you're probably not gay, and the predator is just fucking with your head. And that's what's going on. You want to know the surefire way to know whether you're gay or not? Easy. Imagine somebody's cock. Somebody's naked, erect cock. Does that turn you on? <laughs> Simple as that. Go to Pornhub, right? Go to the gay section of Pornhub. Do all those gay cocks that you see in the, in the, in the porn videos, right? Does it turn you on? Because if it does, then you're probably gay. If it doesn't, then you're probably not. It's that simple. Yeah, but see, these predatory gay men, they're not interested in whether you are gay or not. They want to get with you more often than not because you are straight, see? And, and, and that's the dirty little secret, but it's the truth. A lot of these predatory gay men 
want to get with a straight guy because it excites them, the chase of turning them gay. That's what they're after. See, in the Manosphere, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, getting with girls and, and all the rest of it. And a lot of the people who are in the, um, in the Manosphere, if you will, they're not particularly good at getting girls. That, that's why they're, they joined in, right? But once you get good at chasing girls and getting girls, right? What happens is that, see, getting with a girl is just not very interesting anymore. What, what happens is that you find yourself interested in the hard-to-get girls. Oh, yeah. Because you, you find yourself excited by the chase and not really by the capture, okay? Uh, uh, because a lot of times when you're getting good with, uh, with women, you know, it, it's, you, do, you do this, this, that, and the other, and boom, you're in bed with her. Big fucking deal. But you find some girl that's hard to get, and she captures your interest. And you chase after her. And, and you jump through a lot of hoops to get her. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's novel. It's interesting. It excites you, right? Same with gay guys. Oh, yeah, of course, because, see, it's obvious. Men in general are always sexually available, if you will. We're, we're always on, right? I mean, shit, you know, I remember when I was like 12, 13, 15, you know, my pecker would stand up all on its own in the middle of class. Sometimes it was fucking embarrassing. I'd have to walk around with books in front of me, right? So that people wouldn't realize that I had an erection in the middle of the fucking day and I hadn't done anything or wanted to have an erect penis. It just popped up all on its own, right? Right, I mean, we've all been there, right? But the point, see, is that men are always sexually aroused. And so gay men, it's very easy to get with a gay guy. If you're gay and you go to some place where other gay men are, you're going to find up, uh, somebody else, you know, in about five seconds flat, okay? But see, when that happens with gay men, they get just bored with just regular sex. Just like straight men get bored when they master how to get a girl whenever they want to. And so the gay guy becomes interested in the chase. And a lot of that times that turns into becoming a sexual predator. Okay, and they start chasing after the, the, the guys who are not gay precisely because it's hard. It's difficult to get them. Mm -hmm. And they go after uh, straight guys and they try to do all kinds of, you know, machinations and all kinds of manipulations in order to get the straight guy into bed. Mm. And that includes all kinds of really despicable things. Oh yeah. Yeah, because they'll appeal to whether you want to be cool or not. They will appeal to your friendship with the gay predator, right? I mean, you have become friends with this gay predator and you didn't realize it. And so what happens, he's, he's gonna say, well, remember that time I helped you out? Remember this, remember that? All the times I've helped you, I've been a shoulder to cry on, maybe I've lent you money or whatever, right? and he's gonna guilt trip you. And more often than not, it will work. And if that doesn't work, you know what they'll do? They'll shame you. They'll say, you know, you are gay, I know it, I can feel it, what are you, homophobic? Are you homophobic, huh? Is that it? Shame is a powerful weapon. Shame and guilt are very, very powerful weapons. With shame and guilt, you can get anybody to do practically anything, including getting a straight kid like you into bed when he doesn't want to. Getting in, into bed with a gay predator. Yeah, and of course they're gonna do that. Of course they will. Uh, to, to think that otherwise is just fucking naive. Am I saying that all gay men are like this? No, of course not, okay? Uh, that would be like saying that, uh, I don't know, uh, all men are bank robbers or some shit like that. They're, it's a minority. It's a small minority. The vast majority of gay men, or at least the ones that I've met, perfectly fine, perfectly fine individuals. I have no problem with them, okay? But there is a minority. <laughs> there is a minority, and the thing is, see, it's not an inconsequential minority. There are gay men who are sexual predators, and they come at you softly, gently, welcomingly, and they will use manipulation, guilt, shame, to get a straight guy into bed. And you have to be aware of this. See, like I said before, when I was young, 
I had this experience with this guy that I thought was just weird, right? And then later on, shortly thereafter, as a matter of fact, uh, older people in my life would tell me to be on the lookout for this kind of behavior. Uh, keep my eyes open and be careful that it might happen to me, right? And it wasn't just my parents, it was like aunts and uncles and other people in my life. They told me about this. And as I grew up, I saw this behavior. And as I said before, I could, you know, head off this behavior with, uh, you know, some gay guy that I thought was kind of like, you know, going into a weird area with me. I would just head it off and either just cut off the relationship or just position myself in such a way that it was hard for him to get at me, right? And as I got older, you know, I just blew off these guys. And also I became sexually uninteresting to these guys, of course, you know, because I became a fat middle-aged old man, right? Right. But today, nowadays, the adults are not telling young guys, not telling you, that this happens. Hmm? They're not telling you, not because there's some big conspiracy or some shit like that, but because they feel awkward and confused in the current social environment. Because nowadays, you know, if you warn young guys that there are predatory gay men out there, people automatically assume that you're homophobic. And to insist, it has nothing to do with homophobia. Just, just as, like, for instance, you know, telling a young woman that, you know, to be careful, to don't get drunk in, at some nightclub somewhere because, you know, there might be some guy who will rape her. It doesn't mean that I think that all men are going to rape some girl. Uh-uh. It's going to be a vanishingly small minority. But it's a minority that exists. And to pretend it doesn't exist. And to pretend that, you know, gay sexual predators don't exist. And to wipe away that possibility and say that it's homophobia, that's just stupid and naive. But unfortunately, that's the situation we're currently living in. And that's why the adults are not telling you this. And that's why a lot of young guys wind up in horrible situations and suffer. Well, they basically essentially get raped. Oh, yeah, because that is the ultimate end of these predatory gay men. So you have to be on the lookout. You have to be aware of what's going on. Uh, you, you can't wander the earth, uh, you know, like a fucking retard, you know, expecting that everybody's going to be, you know, wonderful to you. Mm -mm. That's not how life is. Life is very difficult and there are a lot of nasty people out there. And not only like there are nasty people, because it creates a, a vision of a Manichaean world, that there are good guys and bad guys. No, no, no. A lot of times it's opportunistic. A lot of times somebody who's generally a decent person might be caught up in temptation. Caught up in temptation and they act in ways that are really despicable. Hmm? I mean, it's the way of the world. So don't put yourself in a position where you can become a target of sexual predators. Just be smart. Understand what's going on. Understand the dynamic and the motivation of people. See, if people are nice to you and they welcome you and they're just so um, inviting, you have to ask yourself why that's happening. Because more often than not, people want something in return. It's a rare person who acts out of purely altruistic motives. All of us have selfish desires. We have selfish desires and we want things. And sometimes we can't achieve those things, even though we want them very badly. And sometimes, rather than accept the fact that we cannot get something, we are willing to violate even our most important moral principles in order to get the things that we want. Mm, predatory gay men, I'm sure most of the time, 99% of the time, are very decent guys. Even, even the most horrible sexual predator. Mm, yeah, I bet most of the time they're pretty decent, you know. Take out the garbage of the old lady next door, you know, help the handicapped person cross the street. Yeah, I bet most of the time they're very decent, but when they have the opportunity, they succumb to their temptation. So, 
don't position yourself for them to succumb to the temptation that is you. I hope this helps.